Well, hello, and welcome back to another episode of A Counter to Sexy Change My Mind. Today, we are representing... Oh. My goodness, <laughs> we love the way you've done this, really, I'd love it. <laughs> We're representing with James Marshall. We have a slightly advanced talk... Because the thing that's going to be launched, the thing we're going to be talking about today that we need you to know about is actually going to be launched in a couple of days' time. So this is a tiny sneak preview for me, and I'm dead excited and dead happy that you've like, chosen to come on this. So thank you very much, and welcome right, to the show, yeah. James Marshall. Thank you so much. The worst is the beginning, and um, my start, uh, you've been in Captain Chadenbrack presents as well. Exactly. We all represent. We do. We all represent. What we represent, that's to be mm. determined. Indeed, indeed. That's, that's so, deep. Already, that's some deep crap. I told you I make people cry. I go deep straight away. I can't do small talk. Got it. That <laughs> first bit. Let's go. So, talk to me, James. Two, in two days' time, and I'm not swearing you there, that <laughs> in two days' <laughs> time, you were going to be launching a new side of your of the business or the bigger vision for your business. Right. And by the time people have heard this, the secret will be out. So what's going on in your world? Great. Um, what's going on? So um, on the 1st of March, 2024, just for the three months in to the history of Represent, we come into phase two. Um, phase two... For anyone that's familiar as myself and Ted will be with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, really when is when all the good stuff gets going. Um, it's what we do and how we do it, providing business critical services in one place and one vendor that you actually need. There's how I did overall in that statement, but what do we actually do? Number one, commercial growth. Second, compliance resourcing. Number three, human capital management. Number four, IT and technology systems. Number five, nice. digital transformation. Quite a lot that below there. Is a chunk of stuff. Mm. All aligned, all aimed at the accounting profession. Yeah, so we work with um, financial services providers. We work mm. with uh, accountants. We work with SaaS vendors. We also work with some large corporates as well. So there are variations to what we provide in service depending on the market vertical that we're working with. Um, but first March is the official launch of the business. We were able to team clients across three continents. So yeah, um, it's Amazing. The, the reason why I look like I'm purely 40 is even though I'm 32 is because I've aged a lot in the last three months. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to take offence to that because I am in my early 40s. Mm. So, well you, well, you look um, like you're 32, though. That's the thing, right? Whereas <laughs> I am 32, but look like I'm in my early 40s. So there you go. That, 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 that's that one sweat for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so you say you're only three months into this business. Yes. Okay. So what were you doing before this business? Talk to me. Uh, not very much, if I'm honest. Uh, no, so I've got... Um, <laughs> Fiddling my thumbs. Yeah, it was just, just taking clients out. Waiting for, for an idea to happen. Yeah, pretty much. It's just buying my time, really. Uh, no, so over the last decade, I've worked with huge companies, the UK's biggest software companies, the likes of Iris, the likes of Sage. Absolutely love to enjoy my time there. Um, I have provided souls manage teams or even directed uh, teams and third parts of departments where it comes to services for accountants, uh, tier one, tier two banks, uh, wealth investment management companies. I am, as they would say, financial services through and through Captain Kelly. So yeah, I've got um, a decade worth of experience under my belt, won a couple of awards along the way and um, yeah, just been cruising through life, having a great time working words in the major companies. Amazing. So when you say awards, you know, I've had awards. I've had an award for being early for the next day because I was so late for school. Uh, congratulations. Thank that you. Is, that's far better than any award that I've got. Yeah, I got my 10 metres. Well good. done. <laughs> I, think I, I think I got um, a, a fourth place from a rock rosette once, which was, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. awesome. I'd still have that on my wall if I got it. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
but awards aren't everything awards aren't mm. everything so I'll, I'll leave that there but talk to me then about this business structure because it's it's different to what's available currently this is a, a larger enterprise it's got 12 founders is that am i reading the bet that right myself and 11 other co-founders absolutely i just um, picture you around well, a big round table like like the knights of the a round table it, 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 like. <laughs> to show us there's some kind of like jonathan born ai inspired image to be generated there <laughs> and maybe it's good like me like that showing showing you what's happening so maybe you need to get it as well right i'll see what the um interesting i'll see what the book of dawn can provide us on that one kelly but um so yeah um the biggest thing to understand when you want to bring a change to the industry you do have an idea you can have a vision it's great but what i found very very quickly as part of our vision is that money has to do on ourselves really yeah. simple and straightforward and um, sometimes in business what you need to do in order to be successful is facil facilitate the conversations with the right people in the right way at the right time. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I'm here to do. So my job title, if you want a job title, is a job title, but my role as chief evangelist, right? Um, it's my job to see professionally, but I'll do. Mm -hmm. and introduce the relevant subject matter experts, the right people, my co-founders, their teams, to introduce them to our prospective client once we've qualified and clarified that we're going to be the right choice for the clients and equally as importantly they're going to be the right choice of company for us as well so that's my job but building and scaling what we've done already and what we will continue to do so as we move into phase three and phase four for represent across 2024 and 2025 it's impossible to do by yourself Damn it. It's a nightmare. It's crazy. Board meetings are great, but I have full okay, disposal. And um, especially when you've got uh, one, one uh, in particular of my co-founders being uh, MC of it and coordinating, uh, coordinating the masses. But yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome times. <laughs> I'm looking forward to Friday, by the way. Amazing. And also, as one of our esteemed guests, I'm delighted. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, great to... On site, on site, no one is watching. Enjoy some, uh, <laughs> in, in Jeff Lock, great. Yes, uh, enjoy some. Uh, sometimes I turn the lights off so nobody can actually see. <laughs> uh, but yeah, ironically, I'm usually by myself, so woe is me. Uh, but yeah, no, get ready to, um, it's an amazing evening. Uh, we've got some amazing people speaking there. One being the UK's number one most racial business speaker, Brad Burton. There oh, is one of my... about it. I think he's like mentioned on every one of my podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. News travels fast. The good news is out. The good news is right, right? Yeah. I was um, interviewing Nick Elton. Oh, yeah. Uh, the other Elton. Yeah. Awesome. So, he, yeah, Brad gets about it. <laughs> Listen, he's, he's known by many, and that is his gift, right? Positively impacts people's mindsets. That's what he does. That's what he's done for me. That's what he does for our board of represent. Excellent. So talk me through, talk me through the individual business services you are attacking, at the world's best word, mm. and why, why is it important that you bring your spin to these services? Great. Um, so we'll start with, uh, we'll start with commercial. The reason I guess we'll start with that. The most important thing for any business is selling your services. If you don't sell your mm -hmm. services, you don't exist or you cease to exist, right? Um, let's focus in on the accountancy profession for this part, even though, as we discussed, there's multiple other market vessels. But otherwise, I will have you here for hours going through the complexity of <laughs> variation. I don't right? care about anyone else. I only care about accountants. <laughs> and that's because accountants are sexy. So, exactly. Yeah, we got that in there. Why yes. waste my time? <laughs> Absolutely. But no, so we'll start with then, we'll start with the accountants going through. Um, going through commercial. So selling your services and selling your business is really, really important. Mm. Um, it's an overarching kind, and it's going to annoy some people, but it is the truth and it is honesty, and it has been said to me by many accountants. Accountants don't like so. A lot of accountants do not feel confident. They don't want to, do want to come across as salesy. They don't want to pressure their clients into what they do and how they do it. What we do to change that, number one, I work strategically with people managing sales within accountancy practices 
they have to change their mindset mm -hmm. in order for them to change their industry. Every council needs to understand and know that the services that they provide, it's not just a following was what might be there, what a client might want. Depending on the service and depending on the client, each and every service that you offer is valuable to that client. Mm -hmm. And it's your duty and responsibility to make sure that they know about that. Yeah. The way you go about doing so, I've been doing this for over a decade. Sales comes naturally and easy to me. So teaching people how to do it themselves is really, really important. Whether that is training their staff, being with everyone together, doing a workshop day in a room, implementing a bespoke sales methodology that I've written for the organization and training people on that. It's really, really important to grow your own. Sometimes you don't need to externally resource a service or solution. Sometimes you've got a great and fantastic team there that can do that for you, yeah. right? They just need to be given a little bit of a help in Empowerment. Hand. Absolutely. It's a really, really important number one, empowerment. Number two, um, strategy. So you may find this yourself with a lot of what you do. I know I am an avid reader of the content that you put out on social media daily. Absolutely adore what you do and how you do it. A lot of times... People seem to think that you can have sales and marketing, either one of them, and you won't be successful. Mm. To a certain degree, you can be. But if you harness them both together in the proper, succinct ways, that's why the logic can't be. Yeah. I'm a bit old school with this. When I think about marketing and sales, or sales and marketing, I do think about it as sales and marketing functions. Mm. Because when I started in sales, sales. Way, way, way back when, they were mm. so closely aligned mm. and, they were, and they would be in offices that are so next to each other and you would talk about it all day long and there'd be a product management specialist that sat in the middle. So mm. it was always sales and marketing for me. Mm. And then I think because of the digital age, that's showing my age, I think it kind of got broken up into sales, telephone, marketing, online, and then all of a sudden the marriage wasn't there anymore and I found that really strange. Yeah, it, it is. Why should the reliance be on, so give you an analysis, right? Um, why should the, the reliance be on the marketing company when you're not going to sell through the door? Mm. So you can help the marketing company help to produce your content, build your content right back with your input and investment. But it's ultimately the responsibility of you, mm. or if you choose the resource that represents, shameless plug that, um, it is the responsibility of that person to get that lead and opportunity manage that funnel and by manage that sales cycle in the most efficient way where that leads to close one rep. So I guess something back to it, one of the most important things around our resource commercial solution, so where we provide either a part-time or full-time member of staff to work with a fantasy firm in this parameter and um, to manage the entirety of the sales cycle and process. Really important to understand and get that across. Leads do not generate revenue. Mm -hmm. We contract our teams on closed one revenue. Yeah. And we manage everything from lead generation through to client signature. We try to secure up the bench safe uh, you know, the client day from the client onboarding from there. But also working with firms in relation to cross sell and upsell for their existing client services and services. Also in an initial we connect business owners, we connect firms, we connect their teams with their ideal client quicker and for long. Mm. So would you then go through a process of reconnecting with these clients mm. to, to upsell them? So they have the conversations with their accountants, with the accountant staff throughout the year. They're a bit at a point for you to say, how's it going? You know, are you enjoying the service? What's missing? How's your business growing? And have those conversations that are a bit more probing. Absolutely. So there's one thing here of net new revenue, right? Either from the logo wins or even from existing customer growth in MRR or ARR, depending on how you report it. There's another thing there for proactive revenue retention. So this way, right? Um, we've all left contract with a business somewhere, shape or form. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's because we got grown, which is great because we don't need growing more. Sometimes it's because they give us a bad service. Or, more likely than not, somebody else has come along to be able to provide a better service, right? So if a client's going to leave, they've kind of made that decision already. You might have even signed a contract with a new accountant, and your chance of saving or retaining that business in custom 
is minimal if it exists at all. Proactive revenue retention, checking in with clients, making sure they're happy, making sure they're getting quality out of service is the single most important thing where it comes to retention of revenue. And a lot of firms that provide amazing service, a lot of firms like there are hundreds and hundreds that I've worked with over the last decade, okay? And there's so many firms that, that miss that. They don't have people properly equipped to be able yeah. to do that. There is a phrase that rings through in my in my head from the conversations I've had with accountants, and it's mm. when their clients turn around and say, I didn't know you did that. Mm. I didn't know you offered that service. I didn't know because they're not having the conversations. They're not bringing that to their attention because they're not asking about their business. Yeah. So it never comes up in conversation. So they feel embarrassed because they feel like their the salesiness is probing and intrusive and they shouldn't be doing it. And actually, you are missing an opportunity to retain your customer, provide more value and give them what they mm. actually need. Absolutely. It, it's huge. Um, that is one of, one of five things, in a nutshell, that we do. Amazing. So what about the others? I mean, you've got like IT and what, what else? Absolutely. So compliance being the next one, right? Um, we have um, a team of 14 already in India providing uh, resource offshore solutions for accountants. So that could be anything right the way through from bookkeeping, PAT, management accounts, year-end taxation for corporates as well as for personal tax, um, payroll, and even audit, right? So any other firm would mean what they think and feel global right-sizing of who is doing that work creating cost efficiency, creating ease of use from an onshore perspective, giving their team more time back to be able to concentrate on what is the most important thing, which is the client relationship. In a nutshell, yeah. that's it, simple and straightforward. So the pushback here, some people are still very unsure about off, uh, offshore services, as like yeah. outsourcing to India. So what have you found were the barriers and how, how have you overcome those barriers? Um, barriers, the biggest thing with this whole industry is transparency mm. and transparency is at the forefront of everything that we do. Um, that we can be really, really clear as to what that actually means in the real world. Transparency for us means we are open and honest in relation to all of our fees, not just providing services on a fixed fee. We tell our clients what we pay our staff, what our business overheads and operational costs are. We tell our clients what our profit margins are. When it comes to transparency, the contractual terms that our clients have with us are exactly aligned to the contractual terms that we have with employees. Okay. So it's not a three, six, 12 month contract. If we have got a notice payment and employee across a one, two or three month period, depending on the level of seniority, that is the exact contractual terms that we have with the client. The Seems that's missing from this entire industry. Quite a bold statement. This might come back to haunt me. Outsourcing is dead. Okay. Outsourcing is a transactional service where an external company is responsible in totality for providing something. Mm. You take a process and function outside of your organization, your brand. Whether you do things, that becomes diluted, it becomes a mess. Yeah. That's the reason why we resource. Resourcing is connecting designated members of staff with a client, mm -hmm. either on a part time or a full time basis, or even working with them on a, a collective a number of jobs together, but having designated people that understand the process, the business, the culture, and the end client our service is being provided for. Yeah. Doing that. In the exact same terms as the employment contracts versus the contracts we have with clients, having openness and transparency, paying our staff for them only because our profit margins do not need to be anywhere near what others are elsewhere in the industry. Mm -hmm. That creates happier staff with a better working environment, freedom and flexibility with clients with brutal, honest, open transparency. My ambition is not to make a lot of money. My ambition, hey Kelly, is to provide a significant change that the offshoring or outsourcing industry mm. where it comes to India is to provide that change, provide that change to people, provide that change to the industry 
no, for biosphere well. It sounds like an incredible mission that you're on. It sounds like a, it. I'm going to say this, and, and I'm not actually sure how it's going to sound when I say it, but it's a young okay. man's vision. So okay. it's the generation that have come up have a totally different um, perspective on how things should happen and ethical stances and mm. what they get enjoyment from and how business should be run. It's like it, there is an entire generation, I think, and I'm not saying you're a young person, but that you are coming from that 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 positioning where it's not about the mass capitalization it's not about the increasing profit margins squeezing every bone out of it and all of the juice out of everything you possibly can it sounds so much more ethical and sustainable and dare i say enjoyable Mm. it sounds like an enjoyable business to be a part of yeah that's the idea we want to um what we want to see what's really really important to us is is to create a culture of transparency is create a culture of whether you are a client, whether you are an employee, whether you are an employee in the UK, um, in India, in any country that we continue to develop as part of phase three and phase four into, you want us to make it a great place to be like, um, we spend so long in around work, our working lives, life's too short. As far as I'm concerned, you're one of them. So why not do something great? Why not be part of something bigger? And that's what we wanted to create the seed of in line with face. So I'm just going to send in a challenging question as well, mm. because people at home will probably be thinking about this. Why not UK staff for your compliance? Why not UK staff for your compliance? Yeah. You need them. Really simple. So why not UK staff for your compliance? Any firm or business that has a concept or idea that they can offshore the entirety of their operations is wrong. Any firm that thinks that offshoring is going to rid UK staff of their jobs is wrong. Mm-hmm. You need both to work in connection together. If you think about the vast majority of what is done from an offshore perspective, I'm not just talking about any clients. South Africa, Philippines, oh, Romania, yeah. anywhere in Eastern Europe, India, right? You think about the vast majority of work that's done, it is, a lot of it is back-end processing work. Um, we are seeing a change in the industry as people become more and more comfortable with South Offshore and then moving through into client relationship and management roles. Yeah. Um, what is brilliant to see with technology and the advancement of technology, you could be in your home office, you could be in your home office, but we're connected to get the like right there in person, right? So we just talk about London Crawl Webinar. But where it comes to what is possible is global right sizing as to who should be doing that work at the most cost effective rate in order for the business and the client satisfaction to be its highest bottom level. Mm. That's what it's about, right? It's it's not about the disconnect. It's not about outsourcing. It's not about losing control of the process. It's around resourcing and bringing that partner into your organization to work exactly as you would do, regardless if you're in the office working from home or in an office in India. I have heard some stats on um, on using offshore companies in a similar vein. Um, and the chap that was talking about it, then I'm going to butcher his name. I think it might be Gail Beaumont. I think it might have been, at, um, yeah, I, I think his name is Dal Beaumont. But he, he was saying that his company has grown substantially larger and substantially faster because of the use of offshore services. Yeah. And he now employs more people from a local perspective than he could have ever have imagined employing before because he's had this resource. And I was like, that's a totally different perception to what most people have. That is is very angle on it. And ultimately, yes, my my opinion, as biased as as it may be, for obvious reasons, um, offshoring doesn't take away from the opportunities in the UK. It enhances them. Mm. Ultimately, it's the overall business level of profitability. So clients are happier with the services that are receiving because things are being monitored, attended to, looked after a lot quicker, rapidly, uh, and, you know, with, with better precision, 
because you've got the right combination of localization of workforce, that creates more jobs, more opportunity at a high level of job security for everyone, whether they're onshore or offshore, right? So really, really important. And one final question before we move on to other areas that you're working with. Mm. So this is accessible for smaller practices as well as the larger ones? Absolutely. So um, what's really important, we're a startup. You're a little guy, right? Why <laughs> would a little guy, uh, even though I, ironically, uh, if anyone who's not known me in person, I'm six foot six, that's certainly <laughs> not what somebody would do as a little guy. Um, but why would the little guy not want to support other little guys or gals for that yeah. matter, right? So really, really important. It's available whether you are top 10 in the UK market, whether you have just set up your one-man band and you've got a handful of clients. The solution is there. It is available. And regardless of how we work with clients, whether they are small, medium, large, whatever it may be, um, all of our services are provided on a fixed fee. We don't work on hourly rates. So you, as the end user, the accountant, needs to know your cost of sale and level of profitability before you do commitments to work, which is the exact reason, regardless of how we work, we work towards a fixed fee. Mm, this is interesting. I know a couple of clients, uh, yeah, a couple of clients at the moment that are going through scaling, kind of. Mm. They're wondering when to employ, when not to employ, who to employ. And it's mm. right on the tip of their tongues, like at the moment, with regards to their, their problems. So mm -hmm. there is there is a conversation to be, to be had. I think we can make make business easier. That's mm. what it sounds like. Love that. Make business easier. All right. All right. All right. Take that one. Thank you. So talk to me about the other what, three areas. We've still not got deep into it. So we've got, and I don't know why, my, my memory is not great. All I keep remembering is IT, and I think that's come but there's some from an IT background. If you've got an IT related problem, you need to fix and kill it. Because I'm not the guy. Um, I used no. to be serviced. Um, uh, oh, God, there's a mic. I used to be in IT selling service solutions. Right. So I expect to get grilled on the IT sector where we got to, like I was, And um, where do you host your servers? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Great, great question. Yeah. Um, so. Um, all that point, next point, I will breeze through human capital management. So human capital management is one of two things, either the employment of staff or it comes to a role on HR, right? So mm -hmm. really, really important that we provide, again, looking at what the service could provide for accountants, number one, a bureau from a payroll situation. So we could either partially manage or fully manage the entirety of your payroll setup. We can do that on our bureau. We can do that on your systems and processes. Mm -hmm. We can provide staff offshore through the processing. We can provide well staff offshore as well as here in the UK. The UK part of that thing to do with um, the client contacts and communication. That could be done as part of a white label solution, or we can be represent depending on what you have the preference for. Okay. Same situation where it comes to HR. So where it comes to HR, HR advice, support. HR directors having something signed off. A lot of people have, like a lot of small businesses, right? Let's talk to you on small businesses and those that don't have an extensive in house HR team. And yeah. um, a lot of small businesses have queries and questions. Sometimes they guess that, but they shouldn't do so. And actually, you need the advice of a HR professional, but do not have the money nor the need or requirement to have somebody in, either from a legal perspective due to your number of employees. Or even from a um, a cost perspective, mm -hmm. your turn up, your business, your profit that you make does not justify a full time member of staff within that role. It's a lifeline for so many businesses, and it's an area that I feel is critical to understand, get right, and it's very, very important to do. Mm -hmm. So that, and I'm not sure it's actually. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, that's an interesting side to me as well. We um, I used to work for a company who didn't have any problems for a long time. Mm -hmm. So you kind mm. of coast, don't you, when you have no problems. You're like, ah, it's mm. not important. Who needs HR when you've got no people problems to the HR, you know, like we, for a need of them. And then they started having problems. Mm. And it's at that, that point, point that they had to build the relationships, find the people, kind of bring mm. people in that had the skills and the knowledge to be able to deal with the problems that they were experiencing. But it was all too late by then. Mm. Like the relationships had been damaged. Wrong things had been said. Emails had been sent. Like, 
there was a lot to, and, and I know HR people do more than just manage the problems. Mm. But at that point, it was too late. They didn't have a solution in, in advance. And it was, awesome. Awesome. It was um, quite went to, to watch the downfall of that. Yeah, given with the, um, uh, apologies for this, but sometimes the time, I'm not, I'm not lucky enough to be a better preparer, but some great bad jokes. So I'll keep it accountancy related. <laughs> uh, and the biggest assets uh, that we have is our staff. Right, you've got to look after your staff. You've got to support them. HR isn't just a big scary thing that you need to go out when you need to sack them off. It's about making sure that people are properly looked after, properly yeah. supportive, and can be in an environment where they can do the best job that they do. Totally. I mean, I, you see my content. I talk about menopause all the time. Like there are more. This is something that came up during the Accountex talk. There are more policies for pet. Um, grievance, not grievances, but when they die, I can't think of the word. Yeah. There are more policies for that than there is for menopause. It, it's absolutely shocking. But this is why you need someone to come into your business because it might not have been in your ra- on your radar. You might not have been exposed to it before. There are things that you will not know that an HR person will know that they can say, you know, shall we shall we look at the, how this is affecting your staff? Or maybe you want to put mm. a policy in, in for this because you've got women that are coming through their 30s and this is going to affect them. Like, mm. you don't know what you don't know, so find mm. someone who does. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, um, very, very important. Um, you asked about IT, so <laughs> let's get to it. Um, well, where do you store your data? What do you do? How do you do it? Blah, 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 blah. There are so many providers out there that are bigger, that are more established, mm. that have huge amounts of capital and have their own very extensive server farms somewhere on an Amazon boat, which is inside of um, the correct areas with regards to data storage following Brexit. Mm-hmm. Try and do that against somebody else would be impossible, it would be a waste of time, and it wouldn't work. Where you end up with issues where it comes to IT, is being stuck between a rock and a hard place. Okay. Number one, in relation to the support that you get, mm-hmm. having a unified solution from one place, whether it comes to connectivity tools, whether it comes to Microsoft licensing, software, hardware, servers, internet, phone lines, or everything else, right? So anything I see related in a nutshell is the simplest way to do this. But the issue that you have is having everything connected together, having everything simplified, and in one place. Yes. That's exactly what we do by representing IT. So, the equivalent of me, I know it's hard to think, is there anyone that is so... Um, I'll let you finish that sentence No, I'm going to say you can keep going if you want. I've got no words. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the if, you, if you think my Dale's experience, you take that into IT, IT procurement, yeah. and Connor, Okum is one of my um, co-founders and his director represent IT. He has got that same experience from an IT field as I do from a commercial standpoint. Um, there is nobody better that I know and the way around. I'm sure you were great and are great coach, but there is nobody that I know and I'm more aware of than Connor to best support what we're doing from the standpoint. So it's the project management. It used to be um, unification of bringing together multiple different partners and service delivery companies, taking the cream of the crop where it comes to external partners and third parties that we work with, and bringing them all together as part of a unified, yeah. fully project managed and supported solution. That is exactly what Represent IT does all in one place. Um, I said yeah. earlier on, probably, that Rock, you know, such a rock and a hard place. A lot of business yeah. was sort of found this. If you think about, um, if you think about the IT team blaming uh, IT team blaming your software provider or your service delivery partner and saying, no, this is an issue with this, they need to fix this, this is nothing to do with us. So that mm-hmm. kind of trend comes up an awful lot in business, right? It leaves the customer stuck For between the two. Yeah. We are providing both. If we're responsible for both and mm. delivery of both, there is no middleman. We can fix ourselves. There's no issue. There's no downtime. We're there and can support a business from multiple different aspects in connection together. And represent 
is about bringing together the best in their own fields and industries in order to do exactly that. Mm. So how affordable is IT support for small businesses? Because I've worked, networked with METS, spoken to different IT suppliers, and there was always the argument that it was it's an expense until something goes wrong kind of like the hr yeah. argument as well it's an expense to go until something goes wrong and then you find the value in it and then unless mm. anything goes wrong you never find the value kind of like insurance so yes. how affordable is it for small businesses to have this support um you said that on the cover that's required depends on what needs to be done for the small business um it also depends on the exact requirements to scale up from both a software and hardware perspective, ultimately as to what that would cost. And again, I kind of like, can I repeat what I said before, but in relation to a different business unit or a different business area? Transparency. Um, we show you our cost, we show you our profit margin, we show you exactly what's there. Simple and straightforward. That transparency is very, very important. We are not a software business. Mm -hmm. We do not provide a SaaS product. We are a service delivery business. We are not here to make our margin from reselling Microsoft products, licenses, or anything else. Mm -hmm. The savings that we make, the buying power that we have, that procurement and that saving, we pass on to clients as part of our deliverable service. So we're all we have the responsibility for providing the service, whether that is the consultancy, whether that needs to be um, networking environment, the concepts of creation, building these out, public cloud, private cloud, depending on what we're talking about, there might be some people thinking, what is public cloud? What is yeah. private cloud? Um, obviously, you know what I'm talking about here. Yeah. But um, going back to it, transparency and honesty is the most important thing. Mm. Procurement and taking advantage of our overall procurement uh, position, creating cost saving for a business that if they want to get it themselves directly and also project managing and coordinating. And the reason why, just to finish on that point, um, it talks about affordability for a business, right? Sometimes affordability isn't something that you can assert directly next to an invoice value. You mm -hmm. need to think about the loss of time. You need to think about the headache of doing okay. so and finding that out. I think if you've got the right people that know what they're doing, whether mm -hmm. it's in IT, whether it's in commercial, whether it's in compliance, that time saving you also need to track as part of your return on investment is what value does that provide to mm. you? And is that the difference between you doing it myself or having somebody else who's a specialist do it for me? Yeah, no, totally. This is why my husband is worth every penny. <laughs> having, 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 uh, having met your husband before I met you and having <laughs> ring chast with him at the uh, Strivex. Uh, Christmas party, which yeah. was awesome, by the way. Um, having met him before, he, I can say, yeah, he's he's definitely worth his money. Kind, of, it was incredibly knowledgeable. We had a cold chat about it, actually. <laughs> yeah, he's a super nerd, and mm -hmm. he saves me a lot of time, like going over the same thing again and again. Even if he just does, comes and does exactly what I've done anyway, and all of yeah. a sudden it just works like magic. He does yeah. save me a lot of time, and he saves me a lot of money because otherwise. I get quite ragey and I might throw my laptop to like a wall or something. That, <laughs> so that, that is that okay. We've all had moments. Um, <laughs> should we be worried or concerned for yours and safety? I don't know. Uh, I'm sure. Just be worried about the laptop. It's fine. Okay, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. Um, but that's cool. So we're four at five. We're four at we five. We are now four. Yeah. So we've got, and I remember, um, your digital transformation. Now, yes. this is a big one for accountants, mm. and I've heard Will from now speak about it and speak about it again and speak about it again. And every time he speaks about it, it's like the digital adoption seems to like be stagnant. It's not, why is it not growing? And I don't know, why, why aren't more accountancy firms far more down the digital journey than we kind of, from this perspective, assume they should be? That is that that has multiple multiple layers. I think um, you referenced um, obviously both on L, right? Um, so if you think about the human third, uh, if yep. you think about the percentage of accountants that are actually adopting and using cloud-based technologies, 
the, the fractional percentage of what's there in the totality of the market is minuscule uh, as opposed to my belief and understanding before reading that, right? Um, why are more people not getting involved in doing it? Um, sometimes it's a lot of fear, it's uncertainty. It's also, why do I need to do it in understanding the benefit of that? You know, the plans to fit that process, right? Mm. Um, digital transformation can mean so many different things to different people. Like a lot of people think, oh yeah, great, digital so transformation, just a, just a cool, funky little buzzword, right? Yeah, you drop them all the time, thanks. Um, we, we've not found, Jim that just working on this, and the experts that are involved and excited for using it more friendly, she'd be like, no way! Yes, like, um, the experts are involved, particularly with digital transformation. Um, there's not been a single product from a single source to another that has not been able to control, implement, train, convert, and unborn a business to. Okay. So whether you're a corporate, whether you're a financial service provider, whether you're talking about cool sexy fintech, whether you're talking about um, AI enhancements that have recently come into software solutions, which is great to see in the yeah. marketplace, bring on the AI, right? Okay. Um, whether it's been, um, you know, payroll conversions from one system to another and to, uh, majority, uh, to, to automate majority of the tasks involved in the payroll process. Mm. For a UK top 10 firm, who's got experience just doing that stuff already. Um, whether it has been, you know, data conversion, right? Um, that I could do myself, put one in four matters up, and actually everyone has to be able to take care of that full thing. There's so much that can be good. There's quite a digital transformation. Mm. Um, it's not just the tech that you use with clients, but it's the tech that you use internally as well. And tech, Tech, digital transformation, and IT, there's a lot of overlap there in a really positive way. The mm-hmm. great thing is you built, right? Um, mm. And that's the act. And then you talk to each other. We can. It's, 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 it's yeah. this great, great communication tool. We turn developed to call it the phone. <laughs> sometimes, we use, sometimes we use Teams um, at good points. We also use a cup, uh, a cup and string. But yeah, we talk to each other, we collaborate, we work together, we sit around the same board meetings and tables, we understand and listen to our clients, and we've got a proven track record of being the best in our own fields and industries. Amazing. So here's a question then. How quickly are you thinking of scaling this business? Like, what, what is the next three months, six months, a year look like to you before you reach the next phase? Um, again, that's, that's a great question. Um, I know this would be a lot more seamless than I just made, essentially. Yeah. Uh, I know, um, I know we will, uh, from an employee count perspective, from a global position, we're now just shy 50. Okay. Um, we'd be going to overall the brand represents been going and has been in place for four months. And I accept that from a head count perspective to get on towards 200, if not 250, by 1st of March 2025. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's good level of scalability now, I think, fair yeah. to say. Um, geographically, there's also going to be further geographical regions that we open ourselves up to, that we continue to, to move into. And not necessarily just in relation to all services, but if you go in this way, there are other markets outside of India are very, very interesting from a resource and perspective. Mm. Um, geographies that are more aligned, you know, potentially culturally, if not from a time zone aspect with the UK market. Mm. Let's talk about the UK market here, right? But the US market as well. Yeah. But you're really market, right? Um, so. Yeah. There's a lot. From yeah, the world's opened up now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot from a development standpoint. I think before I consider, or before we consider expansion, scaling, or anything else, the way I've always, I guess, run my own client relationships is the way I'd always run what is part of my business. Um, you start with one thing, 
you perfect it, you do it, you self free size more than anybody else in the market could do so. You do it again and again and again and perfect it. There's some things you can perfect before you launch them. There's some things that no matter how prepared you are, you learn in the real world, right? Um, that is so important before we look at scaling. It's about making sure that every touch point with every single customer, every single service we provide is impeccable. And it's mm-hmm. around our reputation that is built on transparency, honesty. You're doing a bloody good job. Wasn't You're doing a bloody good job. You're doing a bloody good job. Yeah, I love that. Me, right? There's nothing more honest than that. Just do a bloody good job. I like it. Really important. Yeah. So I'm going to bring this lovely podcast because I could probably chat to you all day. We could go in, in, in the depth for all of those subjects and more. I'm I'm but, here you need me. But I can't let you go without asking the one final question. Mm. So what is the sexiest thing about accountants? Their brains. Their ability to Not in a zombie way. Uh, I mean, that's, 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 that's your thing, right? You're saying that, uh, not, definitely not in a zombie way, not in the brains, uh, other than where, you know, creative intellectual conversation. Um, the brain and the mechanism is a wonderful thing. And I, I hope this will be up and build book one day because I'll be crunching it myself on there, but the brain and the mechanism is a wonderful thing because having spent a decade, if not longer than with accountants. You ask the accountant why they started a business, why they started a business in the first place. Every single time I've asked been said other than one, every single person I ever did give an answer to that because they want to provide value to clients the world to support, which is a great thing. Um, the only other contrary answer to that was I want to create a successful business and make some good profit and income whilst providing a great job and service. Yeah. That. Our business acumen is so incredibly important. Mm. And that's exactly what I'm here to do and to support the amazing people within this industry that are there already. I've asked quite a few people about why they, what's the sexiest thing about accountants? And most of the time, it is the service. It comes mm. back down to their desire to serve. And I think they're so underrated. Like I, and this is why the podcast exists because I, ha- I think it's a way of just drumming it in again mm. and again mm. and again because they don't value it, they don't see it, and I, I think they need to. So thank you for, thank you for coming on and helping me spread that message. Credit to you, and thank you for spreading that message. I'm blessed to be a part of it. But, well, I'm going to send people to your website. I'm going to send people to your LinkedIn profile. Um, and I can't wait for this to come out because the secret will be out then. And then I can start talking about it. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. We'll still, we'll still burned, uh, uh, great to spend you and you have in place. So yeah, awesome times. I'm looking forward to that. We've met something brand. Exactly. Awesome. <laughs>